Let's talk about superfoods. There are very few foods that are actually worthy of this title. It's really more of a marketing term that was coined by the food industry when they're trying to sell you something. Generally speaking though, superfoods are nutrient dense. They have special properties and supreme benefits compared to other foods. They basically pack the best punch. It's the best bang for your nutrition buck. And I wholeheartedly believe in the superfoods that I'm about to give you because I eat them every day and this is the physique that I'm able to maintain. And I know for a fact that they work extremely well for other people because these are the exact same foods that all my students inside the Fat Loss Accelerator eat and they've all got to see some amazing results. But just know that there isn't a single food that's gonna be the magic cure-all. Like if you start eating avocado, for example, but you're still eating Doritos every day, um, it's not really gonna work. Like I don't want you to come back to this video and say, Carlo, these superfoods don't work. Yeah, no kidding. The good thing is this video isn't sponsored by anyone or anything. I guess I'm the sponsor. So I'm not gonna sell you a supplement or protein powders or anything like that. These are just superfoods that I personally believe in. And I know for a fact that they work extremely well. Like I don't remember the last time I got sick maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago. These are Newbie Fitness Academy approved, if you will. Now, if your goal is fat loss, there are three things in your diet that you need to optimize. Nutrient density, fat, and protein content. So all the superfoods that I'm gonna give you are gonna meet all those three criterias. Plus, they're gonna be extremely delicious. So let's talk about those criterias real quick. Nutrient dense foods are gonna be extremely filling because they're usually high in fiber, which is gonna activate that stretch mechanism in your stomach, which is then gonna activate leptin, which is the hormone that signals your body that you're full and turn off ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. I want you to remember those two things. Now, why am I talking about hunger hormones? Well, weight loss in its very essence isn't about counting calories. Otherwise, you should just drink diet soda all day. It's zero calories. Uh, good luck with that. Weight loss is all about controlling hunger. Why? because being hungry sucks. Let me repeat that because that's a very important concept that you need to understand. Weight loss isn't about counting calories, it's about controlling hunger. Going back to nutrient-dense superfoods, they're also packed with micronutrients and your body needs micronutrients in order to be healthy. That's why Doritos are not good for you because they're extremely nutrient deficient. Your body is still craving nutrients when you eat this stuff, which then causes you to eat the entire bag. Let's talk about fats and protein. Fats and protein also activate your satiety hormones. Fat activates cholecystokinin or CCK, while protein activates peptide YY or PYY. And they're delicious. Think about a piece of ribeye with some butter, for example. Mm. Adequate protein is also key when it comes to maintaining and building muscle while also losing fat. And no, fat doesn't make you fat. Like if you're not eating enough fat, and this is some real talk, you're probably fat. In fact, dietary fat and cholesterol, and they usually go hand in hand, is essential to every cellular function in your body, including your brain. Again, it's not bad for you. But again, I don't want you to just add sour cream to your Doritos and call it a day. Okay, since I've brought up Doritos a couple times already, let's talk about carbs real quick. Carbs are not essentially the enemy. I've mentioned a few times in my videos already that I love cheesecake, but it's more of a cheat meal for me. If we're strictly talking about fat loss, a majority of the population will do better on a high fat, moderate protein, and low carb diet because it's the best diet to moderate your insulin levels, which is your storage hormone. It's the hormone that controls your body weight. And carbs, especially refined carbs like Doritos and sugar, triggers a high blood glucose response, which then triggers a high insulin response to store all that sugar that's in your body right now, which then causes a blood sugar crash. Your body then freaks out because it thinks that it's gonna go in a state of hypoglycemia, which is gonna trigger your body to crave all the food. This is why you can't just have one Dorito. After a while, you wanna eat the entire bag. Now with those criteria in mind, I'm gonna give you the top seven newbie fitness academy approved superfoods that promotes health, fat loss, and awesomeness. Before we continue, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. Superfood number one, green leafy vegetables, specifically cruciferous vegetables. Leafy greens include arugula, spinach, romaine lettuce, Swiss chard. I guess I'm gonna include kale here as well, even though I don't think it tastes good. While cruciferous vegetables, and these are my absolute favorite, include Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, and I guess I'm gonna include asparagus here as well because they're delicious even though they make your pee smell funny. Leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables are extremely nutrient dense. This video is gonna last an hour if I list all the benefits of eating them, but they're extremely loaded with vitamins, minerals, they're anti-inflammatory, they're full of antioxidants, and a whole lot of other good stuff for your body. They're low in calories, they're extremely low in carbs, and they're also high in fiber, which is again gonna activate that stretch mechanism in your stomach and really maximize the volume of your meals, which is then gonna activate leptin and turn off ghrelin. Remember those two? Cruciferous vegetables, as if they weren't superstar superfoods already, 
also contain protein. So cruciferous vegetables meets two of their criteria for a superfood. They're nutrient dense and they contain protein and they're delicious. Like I'm thinking about roasted cauliflower and Brussels sprouts right now. Mm. And it doesn't even matter what your goals are. You should be eating this stuff all the time. And this is literally the best weight loss hack on the planet that I could give you. Half of your plates or even two thirds of your plate should contain these vegetables and just watch the pounds come off. You're welcome. Superfood number two animal protein. Ideally, you're eating pasteurized chickens or grass-fed beef or something that came from a good source like your local farmer's market and the animals were raised without antibiotics or added hormones. If you can't do that, that's okay. Just buy the best quality protein that you can afford. And if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I am a big proponent of incorporating key concepts from the primal way of living because that's how we evolved from two and a half million years of evolution. And we as human beings evolved to eat plants and animals. That's why I mentioned plants as superfood number one. Animals, superfood number two. We evolved to eat meat. Our stomachs, for example, are extremely acidic. It's more acidic than purely carnivore animals like vultures and wolves, for example. Basically, the human body loves meat. And animal protein satisfies three of our major criteria for a superfood. It's nutrient dense, it's also high in fat and protein. And you should know this, animal protein is some of the most satiating food on the planet. Again, going back to my ribeye with some butter example, it's extremely filling and it's absolutely delicious. There are also essential vitamins and minerals that the human body needs that we can only obtain from animals like vitamin B12 and vitamin K2, for example. Now, vegans and vegetarians might say, oh, but I got this pill from GNC. Yeah, there's one problem with that you're only getting the precursor and the synthetic version of that vitamin, which means that the bioavailability of it when it comes to your body actually absorbing it is honestly almost laughable. When it comes to a piece of steak, for example, the bioavailability is something like 80%. Again, that's why we evolved to eat this stuff. And a lot of native tribes who still live a hunter-gatherer life are perfect examples of this. And some of them even eat mostly a purely carnivore diet and they have extremely good health. So when they catch these animals, for example, they would actually go after the fattiest parts and organ meat because they're the most nutrient dense part of the animal. This is why you cannot live off of lean cuts of meat. And this has been proven because it leads to something called rabbit starvation. It's only a complete meal if fat is included. So don't be scared to eat dark meat instead of white meat when you're eating chicken. Like a chicken thigh tastes way better than white meat, for example, and eat the fat on your steak. It's the best part anyway. And we actually don't need as much protein as we we've been led to believe your body only needs 0.7 grams per pound of lean body mass. That is it. Even if you're active, even if you go to the gym, some experts even recommend less than that, but we're going to stick with 0.7. So you don't ever need to take BCAAs, pre-workouts or protein powders when you're pumping iron at the gym. It's a complete waste of money. You might as well light your money on fire or donate it to charity. Protein powders specifically are extremely insulinogenic because they're extremely processed and they're usually sweetened with sugar or artificial sweeteners. Superfood number three, eggs. My favorite. The humble egg is one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. It's basically nature's version of a multivitamin. And the yolk specifically is actually the healthiest part of the egg. It contains something like 13 vitamins and minerals, including lutein and choline, which are crucial for your eyes and brain development. And that's also where the cholesterol is, which is again, essential for every cellular function. And that includes your brain function. You would literally die without cholesterol. So throw away your boxed egg whites and think about it from an evolutionary standpoint. Animals would literally risk their lives trying to steal a bird's egg, for example, because they know how nutrient dense they are. Pro tip, because there are about a million different types of eggs at your local grocery store, you really only want to look for one thing, one specific thing, pasture raised eggs. Like free run eggs, for example, doesn't really mean anything. It just means that there is a tiny door somewhere in a tiny cramped space. Going back to our criteria, eggs check off all three boxes. They're nutrient dense, they're high in fat and protein, and they're extremely delicious. I eat like three or four eggs every day. Superfood number four is the number one reason why millennials can't afford a house because they're eating too much avocado toast. Superfood number four is avocado, but hold the toast. I don't really know any other fruit that can even come close to what avocado brings to the table. While most fruits are high in fructose, so that's the predominant sugar in fruit, avocado has a grand total of zero sugar. Instead, it's high in heart healthy monounsaturated fats, and they're also high in omega-3 fatty acids in the form of ALA, which can prevent heart attacks and atherosclerosis. It also contains antioxidants like lycopene and beta carotene. It also contains something like 20 vitamins and minerals. Again, another version of nature's multivitamin. And again, it meets our three criteria. It's high in fat, 
protein and it's extremely nutrient dense and they're delicious. I eat like half an avocado every day, sometimes more. Superfood number five, extra virgin olive oil. Part of the popular Mediterranean diet, olive oil has been a dietary staple for some of the world's healthiest population, especially for those people living in the blue zone. Study after study have shown that the fatty acids and antioxidants in olive oil, specifically oleic acid, has been found to reduce inflammatory markers in the body. This is important because chronic inflammation has been found to be the major driver of many diseases, including heart disease, cancer, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and arthritis. If you have cheap vegetable and seed oils at home, like sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil, or just any cheap oil in general, you need to toss it out. And then you want to replace it with this awesome superfood. Superfood number six, sweet potatoes. I've kind of developed a rap as an anti-carbs guy, but I'm really not. I think you can enjoy them occasionally, especially as a treat. But I would make an exception for sweet potatoes as a possible everyday superfood for one specific reason. So sweet potatoes are a type of root vegetable which comes in different varieties and colors like purple yams, for example. And they're extremely rich in antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, including fiber, protein, fat, vitamin A, C, and B6, and it's got manganese, potassium, and other good stuff. But the main benefit of sweet potatoes, and this is why I included it in my superfoods list, lies in the fact that it's resistant starch. If you've never heard of resistant starch before, it's basically a superfood for your digestive system. Sweet potatoes contains two different types of fiber soluble and insoluble. Your body can't digest either type, so it goes through your stomach and small intestine indigested, eventually reaching your colon, which then feeds your gut flora. And your gut basically acts like your second brain in your body, and this is how you feed it. Taking care of your gut health, keeping those good bacteria happy, is essential to good health because everything starts in your gut. The native Kitavans and Okinawans, for example, which are known to be the healthiest people on the planet, thrive on eating tubers like sweet potatoes, and they have very few cases of modern Western diseases, again, like obesity, cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. Obviously, be sensible about your intake of sweet potatoes, especially if you still have a lot of weight to lose. But feel free to incorporate them in your daily diet, and they're absolutely delicious. Superfood number seven, dark chocolate. And this is for all you dessert people out there. Dark chocolate has a special place in my heart. When I first discovered it, and I read about it for the first time as a superfood from The Primal Blueprint, my favorite fitness book, next to my book, obviously, it was an absolute revelation for me because I have a sweet tooth. And dark chocolate more than satisfies that craving without my diet going down the drain. Dark chocolate is actually loaded with a lot of vitamins and minerals, including, let me just read it out to you, fiber, iron, magnesium, copper, manganese, potassium, zinc, and selenium just to name a few. It's also rich in antioxidants, more than blueberries and acai berries. And that's why people eat that stuff. And it's also been shown to increase HDL, so that's your good cholesterol, while reducing LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. Try to buy at least 70% cacao if you're just starting out, but the sweet spot is 85%. Where it still tastes like a treat, it's absolutely delicious, and it doesn't feel like you're eating chalk. This is my favorite brand right here of dark chocolate. As you can see, I am well stocked. Dark chocolate is still extremely rich in flavor. It's still super rich and creamy, especially compared to like regular chocolate. I usually eat two squares as my dessert or sometimes three if I'm really feeling like treating myself. I don't want to cry every time because I can't believe that I'm eating something that tastes that good, but it's actually good for me. Okay, last superfood shout out goes to nuts and seeds, and that includes almonds, pistachios, walnuts, Brazil nuts, chia seeds, and flax seeds, because they're also high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties, and they're also absolutely delicious. I eat pistachios and dark chocolate every single day. Just to recap, our Newbie Fitness Academy approved superfood lists include green leafy cruciferous vegetables, meat, eggs, avocado, olive oil, sweet potatoes, dark chocolate, and nuts. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk about superfoods. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because here's the thing, 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I want to give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach without depriving myself of my favorite foods or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And hey, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. First, high five.